And the brutally honest answer here is that most people who apply to Google don't get hired. What's up everyone, I'm John, your friend in tech. I'm a software engineer at Google living in San Francisco and today I'm gonna be answering your questions. So we're gonna cover topics like getting hired at Google, coding, college, internships, interviews, basically everything everyone asked me about. So stick around, we're gonna have a good time. All right, so. Good morning everyone. I know it's been a while since my last video. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know I've been on vacation for the past few weeks. So this is my first day easing back into making YouTube videos. I spent some time this morning replying to every single comment that I received while I was out. So it takes a lot of time for me to reply to everybody, but I think it's worth it knowing that I'm actually talking to real people and helping real people with this channel. So thank you. Actually, let me fix this camera. It's a little bit off center. All right, so I asked on my community page and on my Instagram story for questions that you want me to answer in a video, so I picked out a handful of them to answer. So just like my other Q&A videos, I aim to give very genuine, helpful, and practical answers. And as a quick disclaimer, I'm only speaking on behalf of myself and speaking from my own experiences. This is going to be a very casual and chill video where I'm just sitting here answering questions. So feel free to skip around. I'll leave timestamps. <laughs> I'll leave timestamps in the description below if you want to just jump to whatever questions are relevant to you. And with that said, cheers. Alright, so let's just jump right in with the first question. Now this is probably one of the most commonly asked questions I receive on my channel and it's also one of the hardest questions to answer because it's so vague and it depends on so many different types of things. I will probably make an entire video about this question but in the spirit of giving helpful career advice, I'll just answer it really quickly here. And if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. All right, so the question is, how can I get a job at Google? The easy, simple answer is that getting a job at Google is like getting a job anywhere else. So you need to meet the job qualifications, you need to apply, and then you need to pass the interviews. And the brutally honest answer here is that most people who apply to Google don't get hired. It's kind of mind boggling, and I encourage you to look up the stats of like how many people actually apply to Google. And then just think about like, out of that big pool of people, how many people actually get interviewed? And then from that pool of people, how many people pass the interviews? And then after that, it's like how many people actually get extended an offer? Because the reality is that Google can't hire everyone. And so there's going to be a lot of competition. And one way I recommend flipping this question is to ask yourself, why should Google hire you? What makes you special? And what value can you bring to the company? Because think of like all those people that are applying to Google, what sets you apart from everyone else? So while you think about that, let's move on to the other questions. By the way, quick shout out to Jacob for buying me this coffee and supporting the channel. So I have a link to buy me a coffee in the description of all of my videos, but I don't really advertise it. So I thought I'd give it a try now. Totally no pressure. Three free ways you can support the channel is to subscribe, like the video and comment a coffee emoji. All right, the next question is, how long did it take you to get good at writing code? So it took me about a year and a half just to learn the fundamentals of computer science in college. So that's learning things about like data structures, algorithms, object-oriented programming, things like that. I would say my junior year is when I started to feel like really good and confident in my code writing abilities because at that point I had interned at Google, which is where I learned a lot and I was taking a lot more software engineering classes. So I really felt like I could take any idea I had and build an app from that. And I actually did do that with a couple of app ideas I had. So I think doing that all built up my confidence and saying like, okay, I'm good at writing code. All right, so the next question is computer science or software engineering for your bachelors. And I studied computer science in college. My college did offer computer science, software engineering and computer engineering. And so there was a lot of overlap, but there's also a little bit of differences as well. And actually, when I first applied to college, I had no idea what the difference was. I kind of chose computer science on a whim just because I had to declare a major. And I always figured I could just switch later on if I wanted to. So I'm a software engineer now. Would it have made more sense for me to study software engineering in college? I would say not necessarily. I really liked my computer science curriculum at college. So to explain the three different majors very briefly, I would say computer science is the study of computers, how they work and what they can do. Software engineering is applying computer science to build software. And and then computer engineering is designing and building computers. So I think it really depends on your college and what the curriculum looks like. So I think if you're stuck trying to choose a major, I think you should definitely look at the curriculum and see which one you think appeals to you more. And then if you can, try to take a class or two in the major that you're interested in and see whether you like it or not before committing because I took one intro course to computer engineering and I'm so glad I did because I learned that I'm only really interested in building software, not so much doing any electrical engineering work. The next question is, 
what are the things that we need to learn to become a good developer? So first you need to learn how to code. You need to know data structures, algorithms, basically all the fundamentals of programming. And then from there, you can start learning how to actually develop things. So if you want to be a web developer, try building a website from scratch. And then from there, maybe try building a web app. So it doesn't have to be complicated at all. I would actually recommend you try and make your project as small as possible. And then as you learn and grow your skills, you can apply it to whatever it is that you're working on so that it's much more manageable and it's not like you're tackling this huge problem all at once. I also think it's important to note that there's no shortcuts here. If you want to be a developer, you need to learn how to develop things and you'll get better at being a developer by practice and experience. And then other things you can learn to get better at development is to write better code, write code that is easier to test, easier to maintain, easier to read. Those are all really important. Uh, next question is what type of projects do you recommend building for a portfolio for a self-taught developer? I would say start by building something you'd actually use. And I say that because that will help motivate you to actually finish and complete it and plus you'd actually have a real user which is yourself so keep in mind that your portfolio is an opportunity for you to showcase your talents so take advantage of that you'll want your portfolio to reflect your skills and interests so people know what you like to do and what you like to work on so ideally your portfolio will reflect one what you've done before and then to what you actually want to do. Let's just say as an example that you want to join this awesome machine learning team, right? And the recruiter looks at your portfolio and you have like no machine learning experience at all. They might pass on you and instead choose someone that actually does have machine learning experience because they know that that person can probably do the job. The next question is, what was your first software engineering internship like? Was it a breeze or did you need help for the most part? All right, so my first software engineering internship was at Google and it was through their engineering program internship. And that program is different from their regular software engineering internship program because it's specifically for first and second year students. And so the projects that were given was tailored to um, what a first and second year student would be able to accomplish. So the program is also really great because it helps bridge the gap from learning and writing code in college to actually learning how to develop software at a large company like at Google. So unlike the regular internships, there are two to three people on the same project. And so my internship project was actually building a website for one of the Google flight teams. And so I was working on the front end and then two of the other interns on my team, they were working on the back end. But overall, I would say it definitely was challenging, but in a good way where, you know, I was able to grow and learn a lot during that summer. And I think in general, like a lot of these internship programs are catered to help the students succeed because their goal is to eventually get you hired at that company and so they really want to like help you along in your path and also with these internship programs you're kind of matched with a team that matches your skills so um, I did have some front-end web development experience so going into the internship I wasn't completely flustered but yeah in general the internship programs you know they want you to succeed and so you have a lot of support coming from you know your managers and also from the overall intern team to help you get through it. All right, so next question is another question that I get a lot and I, d I have a disappointing answer. The question is, what should I do so you're willing to refer me? And unfortunately, I'm only able to refer people that I personally know. And I know that's not the answer that people want to hear because the overall advice is, you know, get a referral at whatever company you want to work for because that's the best way to get in, right? Or it's a way to increase your chances of getting your application seen by someone. But yeah, the reality is that I can't refer people that I don't personally know. How referrals work is like, I have to kind of fill out a form, say how I know you and what I recommend you work at Google. And so if I don't know you, then I can't really fill out that form. But just because I can't personally refer you at Google doesn't mean that you can't get any referral. I highly recommend, you know, reach out to people on LinkedIn that you may know see if they'd be willing to refer you to whatever company, Google or otherwise, because it really is a good way to get your application seen. If you went to college, you should try reaching out to your alumni network. Maybe someone at your college works at Google, or if you're a part of any developer communities, you could go ahead and try to reach out that way too. But yeah, unfortunately, if I don't know you, I can't refer you. Okay, so the next question is how to prepare for a Google interview. So this is also another answer that you probably won't be happy with, but as someone that actually does interview at Google, there's not much that I can tell you other than just general advice of like, speak clearly, speak your mind and things like that. I can't tell you what questions I ask or how difficult they are, or even like what genre of coding problem I would ask. Um, and even if I did tell you the question I asked, 
there is no guarantee that the person that interviews you will use that question. So I think a better strategy to preparing for the Google interviews is just being ready for any type of programming challenge. And if you didn't know already, Google has an entire website dedicated to how they interview and even interview tips. So I'll definitely link those in the description below. In terms of how I prepared for my interviews, I did use the Cracking the Coding interview book and I didn't do any leak code problems just because that wasn't really a thing when I was applying. So next question is from Jacob. Um, thank you again, Jacob, for the coffee. It says, not an engineer, but a product designer. When should you ask for a raise after you start at a new company? Yeah, so this is a good question. I'm probably not the best qualified to answer it because at Google, we have a more formal promotion process, which is like clearly outlined. But I think just as a general career advice, if you're at a point where you're doing the job that you were hired to do, and then you're doing anything above that, then maybe you should start the conversation on, you know, getting a raise. And there's a really good book called I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. And he talks all about how to negotiate these kind of raises. So I highly recommend you go and read that book. It's been a while since I read the book but basically when you want to ask for a raise you want to talk to your manager about like okay what do I need to do in order to get a raise or to get promoted and then basically when you have that outlined and written down you can come back later on when you've done all of those things and say like hey remember when we met last time you said I would get a raise if I started doing these things and I've shown that I've been doing these things so can I get my raise now I'm not sure if that's the best summary so definitely go look at his book so yeah, thanks for that question. The next question is, what do I do when an entry level position is asking for two to four years of experience? And yeah, that's super frustrating. Um, so what I would say, you just apply anyways. Sometimes these qualifications are just company wish lists, like what they would want in a candidate. And so, you know, maybe like a ton of people are applying with zero experience, but maybe you have one year of experience you know, they would probably rather take you over someone with no experience, even though they wanted someone with two years of experience. So definitely apply anyways, you never know, and it doesn't really cost you a thing to apply. Another way to gain experience is just to, you know, build your own things and build your own apps and develop whatever it is that you want to develop. You don't have to wait for a company to give you an opportunity to apply your skills. You can just do it on your own. So next question is, as a non-computer science new grad, should I go for a startup or FANG? And Fang, if you don't know, is Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, um, like kind of like talking about the big tech companies. And I think it really depends on what you want and what your goals are. Um, there is no blanket statement that applies to everybody. So yeah, this is super subjective and it really depends on what you want to do in your career. Like what are your career goals? How long do you want to work? What kind of work environment do you want to work in? Um, what is it that you want to learn? Are you looking for more stability? Are you looking to work on really exciting projects? But yeah, really just depends on you. I think if you can figure out what it is you want out of a company, then that will help guide you towards startup or fang. For me, I kind of done both, um, but the startups I have were really like super small college startups. And so can't really compare it to like the bigger startups <laughs> in tech. But I knew after interning at Google that I wanted to work there full time just because, you know, the pay is great, the work culture is great. I knew that I would have fun there. I knew that I would learn a lot there. And it was just like the more safe option for me. And I'm really happy with the choice that I made. The next question is, is the job of software engineer field in danger? And that's tough to answer because, you know, there's currently a lot of tech layoffs happening and there's a lot of hiring freezes and things like that. So I really don't know. Um, let me know in the comments what you all think about this. I feel like there will always be a demand for good software engineers, but yeah, definitely with all of these talks of layoffs and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely a scary time, but I'm feeling hopeful. Uh, let me know what you all think about it. Next question is, is work at Google stressful? I would say it can be. <laughs> There's definitely times that are more stressful than others, like, you know, maybe something breaks or there's an outage or there's a deadline that gets moved up or like, you know, we found this bug last minute, things like that. But I would say generally for me personally, my day to day isn't super stressful. Like I'm not anxious and stressed about work all the time. It's definitely manageable, but it can get stressful just like any other job. Okay, next question is, do you think software engineering is a long term career? I would say definitely. I think coding is a lot of fun and it's a lot of technical challenges so that it never really gets old, especially 
with tech always advancing, there's always something new to learn if you want to. And you know, there's like so many companies, so many different products that you can work on. I definitely can see myself being a software engineer for a really long time. But yeah, I think there's a lot of pros to being a software engineer, like one of them being like you can work from the comfort of your home or even you could travel and just work from anywhere as long as you have your laptop with you. So personally, I can see myself doing it for a long term if I wanted to. I have talked about, you know, wanting to retire early. So maybe that means just like 10 more years of being a software engineer and then retiring. Uh, that would be cool as well. <laughs> so my next question is, what's your salary at Google? And I actually answer this in my next video, which is how much Google actually pays their software engineers. And I reveal how I made over $1 million throughout my career as a software engineer. So definitely check that one out if you're interested. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.